Hey everyone, Leticia here. Happy Thursday from Playa del Carmen. Thanks to all of you who may be joining us live and also those of you who would be watching this after the fact. I am joined today, my friends, by uh, my guest, Eric Hoffman. Eric is someone I had the pleasure of meeting recently in Playa del Carmen through uh, one of the local communities here. And, uh, and then uh, recently, one of our common contacts mentioned that Eric is looking to develop contacts uh, in the real estate market here because he is a sustainable home builder. So super interesting. Um, Eric, why don't I, first of all, welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. I was fascinated by our conversation recently. Uh, we, a few days ago, uh, Eric and I met and he was telling me all about what he does and uh, very innovative, like technology for the future, my friends. And I know we are in a, in a, in a time uh, when people are wondering about, you know, alternative housing solutions, decentralized power, being energy uh, self-sufficient as much as possible. So Eric has some solutions for that. I'm going to just uh, turn off my WhatsApp so we don't get interrupted. So Eric, um, tell people, tell our guests, tell our audience a little bit about uh, your background and how you got to, to where you are right now. Um, I've been building sustainable homes and you know, cabinetry and furniture for 25 years in Vermont. And so all these products are ones that have developed along over the last 25 years and have become more prevalent in the construction industry because of their uh, unique qualities and the aspects of them. So they're, they're efficient and it's a quick style of construction and they're very healthy and low carbon footprint mostly from recycled materials, but perform better than a standard cement cinder block construction or wooden construction like up north. So they perform much better and they have much better qualities. They're very well insulated. They're sealed very well. Um, there's minimal air infiltration. They're very structurally sound. They're the highest rating you can get for wind and rain and they're the highest seismic rating you can get so if you build in a earthquake prone area it's the highest seismic certifications you can get as well that's really uh good to know eric so i want to mention to our audience eric is based out of Playa del carmen but their company is uh, able to build these times of this times this types of sustainable uh eco-friendly homes all over mexico and uh he's going to tell us a little bit about more about the materials and how these homes are built and what's also interesting is that these homes can be set up to be completely energy uh self-sufficient so um i'm going to let you speak a little bit about that eric um yeah so as far as, far as like off-grid construction and being a self-sufficient home we will be offering within the umbrella of our construction and as products desalinization units Desalinization. Eric, can you speak up a bit? Your volume, like, try to speak a bit louder. Oh, or maybe a sorry. Mm -hmm. um, desalinization units, so that if you are by the ocean, you can desalinate water. If you can't have a well, or if you have a well, we'll also have whole house water filtration. That on the inlet of the house, it'll filter the all the water that comes in the house. So, out of every faucet, all the showers, everything will be filtered. And you can adjust the electrolyte and salt content of those um, remotely. They'll all have access through Wi-Fi so that you can see and read what's going on with your systems. The same with the septic systems that we'll be offering. They will do the same performance. And they have a 25-year warranty in all these units. And the septic systems are very efficient because they don't use electricity. They just use capillary and percolation and they have a secondary filtration system on them so similar to like a municipal water treatment facility mm -hmm. these septic systems have that so it would be decentralized for your own home or development or hunting camp or fishing lodge on you know fishing encampment on an island and that water that comes as effluence it's called comes out the back end is rated to be used for livestock or gardening or you can put it in a tank and use it for cleaning cars washing things you know you don't have to waste the water 
so you can have a really closed water system um, within that. And if you have a well, same thing. You don't want to be wasting your water. It's a good commodity. It's so you want to be as efficient with that as possible. Yeah, and the septic system as well will can hook up to your Wi-Fi. And so if there's, you know, if you have a low water, if it's a drought situation like sort of going on, it'll let you know, hey, you've, uh, more gallons of water have gone through this system this week than average, so you can backtrack into your system and see if there's a leak or a toilet or a pipe's leaking somewhere. So especially on something where it's multiple homes, that's really an efficient thing. So the ground manager could keep track of, say you have 10 homes, you can scale these all the way up to that. And if you're using more water for some reason, someone left something running or there's a leak. And so that's really efficient for that. And then the um, home will be one, built. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Eric, sorry for interrupting. Uh, I want to also kind of bring in a bit of perspective. So recently, you know, you guys know I live in Fidel Carmen. Many freedom lovers from places like Canada and the U.S. have moved to this area in the past two plus years. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, I've been asked multiple times, you know, there are, there are some of our peers, Eric, that are looking for plots of land and they're looking to build these types of off-grid homes. Yep. And I've even been approached by people that are looking to uh, create these types of communities. Um, and in speaking with you, I realized that the housing solutions that you offer could very well fit in with these types of communities. Number mm -hmm. one, uh, these are materials that are, uh, we could say, eco-friendly and a superior alternative to the local materials that we have access to. So most construction here is built out of concrete blocks. Uh, a lot of it will then be covered by drywall. The the blocks that Eric is talking about, and maybe I can share the screen, uh, they're called thermal rock. So this is actually a material that Eric explained to me is inert, meaning it's, it's uh, and again, I'm no technician, but you, you mentioned these are concrete blocks that are treated with magnesium oxide, which is a natural material, uh, but that makes them uh, basically not appealing to any kind of bacteria or viruses. They are not, uh, they cannot feed off of that. It makes it an yeah. inert material. So anti-mold, anti-fungus, okay? And at the same time, I asked Eric, hey man, but is this okay for human life? Absolutely. It's simply an inert material. It doesn't react with anything. Mm -hmm. So when we're in uh, a high humidity climate, that's the kind of material you ideally want. And in addition to that, Eric mentioned that, um, tell me again what the wind rating was, Eric, for these types of materials, for these blocks. These, these achieve a rating of up to 190 mile an hour winds and they're um, highly impact resistant. So even when there's flying debris, a lot of things that can't, they don't break because they're a, a, like a monolithic panel. And then they're put together with metal beams in between each one. So you essentially create a monolithic wall with minimal joints, unlike the cinder block where there's a joint every block. So amazing. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I can share the screen so people can see what we're talking about. I can bring up the uh, thermal rock. Yep. Is, is that okay? Yeah. Um, so, and I mean, all of the... Um, they're called, they're, they're technically called structural insulated panels. And so they, they, they're, they're, they're used a lot in Canada and the States and Europe. It's just now more taking a hold here in Mexico. Just, it's, you know, I don't want to say- Eric's company, my friends, is actually one of the licensed distributors that, you know, if, if you're looking to have this type of a construction uh, done in Mexico, Eric is now, and his company are now distributors for this technology. So you can have your home. They have different home models that they provide, and they also can build custom homes. Yeah. Uh, but even if you're somebody that, you know, maybe you're already a home builder somewhere else in Mexico or Belize, they're also a license for Belize, and you want to have access to this type of technology, Eric can connect you. Can yeah, you. and they're, they're engineered to be able to go up five stories, with a roof deck you know not a i mean you need actually engineering if you had a pool or something but you can go up five stories and string them together as far as you like without extra engineering and structural um you know planning so they're exactly. very they're very structural so even if you do like a two-story house yeah here all the roofs are flat you can have a, a rooftop garden or you can put a, a 
pergola or a pergoda up there for mm -hmm. a shade and have a garden or a deck and stuff like that just as a matter of course because that's you know they're that structural so it's fascinating to me and i imagine they can be uh Eric, they can be cut to size. I can imagine. Um, oh, yeah, you can cut them to any size you want. You can cut any size windows. You can do any architectural detail that you can do with any standard construction mm -hmm. with these. And they, they're a 90% less carbon footprint than standard construction with concrete brick. And a standard concrete brick construction is a 0.9 insulation R, R value. These are an R20. So they're explain to us explain to us what that means. I know you explained it to me before, but please for our audience. Yeah, so when when they talk about means. insulation, it's called the R value, which is the resonance value. So how much heat or cold will resonate through a wall? And the higher the R value, the more insulated it is. So when it comes to cooling your house here or heating your house in Canada or the United States or Vermont, you know, when it's cold outside you want a well insulated house so the heat's not going through the walls and it's the opposite here you want to be able to cool your house with less resources less electricity running air conditioner a lot less so it's, it. it's about 18 times more insulated than a standard concrete wall that is absolutely amazing to me yeah. it's like, why isn't everybody doing this you know? yeah. I think well it's starting to take off and you can see the construction goes much faster too because that's what I was going to say. I mean, like this yep. is, this could save uh, any developer, any home builder would save them so much, um, so much oh, they time. Go up, they go up a lot faster and they get shipped on a truck flat and they're a very lightweight construction. Wow. So if there's concerns about the foundations and stuff like that, they carry much less weight than concrete and there's no water needed, no okay. sand needed for the construction. So they come as a complete unit. Mm -hmm. seeing these pictures and they get put together like that with the metal in between them and you don't need to be delivering water mixing mortar doing all the things that go along with the concrete construction down here okay that's same, uh, same up north i mean you know the walls yeah, yeah, yeah. are just much thicker because it's like in canada or vermont you need an r30 which is higher you need a, a, a 10 inch thick wall to achieve that but the r20 down here is the four inch walls so that's, okay. that's more than sufficient for the insulation here. Listen, and the panels out. come in eight, 10, and 12 foot lengths, all four feet wide. And they ship okay, right. on the truck so you can get a lot of material to the site easily. Anywhere you can ship anything. These that's fascinating. Yeah. We, I don't think we need to go into too many technical details, but this is fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> the logical, I know, because you're, you're obviously an expert in, in this whole uh, sustainable housing and, and um, eco-friendly and off-grid building. So yeah. that's why I'm talking to you. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't want to be here for two hours because I don't know. <laughs> <think I'm laughs> you know, I'll talk a lot, I know. Um, no, it was fascinating to me. So my question would be, um, obviously, I think a, a question on people's minds would be like, how does this type of material compare to your standard, uh, in terms of cost, how does this compare to your standard um, concrete block construction, which is what's more common around here? Um, it's fairly competitive for a finished cost, you know, um, as far as for us to build it, it's fairly competitive to buying houses that are pre-existing or already built here. It is a little bit more expensive than concrete cinder block, but you get the longevity. Longevity and you save on labor. I mean, cause you, know, you save a lot on labor and speed and maintenance over the years because you don't get the mold that grows on the concrete here and starts to degrade the structure so these can i mean nothing's gonna last forever but these can go on for generations and with minimal maintenance as long as you keep them minimally maintained even the finishes we put on there are much better and don't have i mean they're waterproof and the, immune to the humidity and they're elastomeric so they they last much longer and the house has a much better air quality on the inside because they don't produce a lot of dust they are audibly insulated from the outside too so they kill a lot of noise from the outside they're quiet room to room because the panels are used inside as well so it is a little bit more than 
the concrete construction. But, you know, our sort of philosophy on that is in five and 10 years from now, these are going to be a much more prevalent type of construction the way it took off in the States. So the Absolutely. resale value, <laughs> I know now we're going into a little bit, but resale values and retention of value and not needing to be fixed up or have work done on it when you go to sell it in 10 and 15 and 20 years, mm -hmm. you get a much better return on your investment doing something like this as well. I so love it. a little I love bit more future planning as well than it is immediate cost yeah. savings, but in the, the resale value, it definitely is going to in the interest of time, Eric, uh, why don't you tell me a little more about some of the other components uh, to these homes that you're building? And guys, uh, Eric has a website that is just like on the verge of being launched and where he's going to have some of the some different models of homes that he is able to build like now at the same time if if you are a client that wants a custom home made whatever size you want however many number of rooms we're gonna tell you how to reach out to uh, eric at the end and yeah. and they're very flexible they can work with you um eric so, so some of the, other wanna... products, the next step after building the houses would be the finishing of the walls and the ceilings and stuff like that and that's a, an acrylic based elasco merrick it's called finish which is like a, a plaster finish for the inside so there's no drywall you just use the panels are the finished exterior they're the in insulation and they're the finished interior and they're also the structural part so once you put the house together everything's ready to be finished which is a trowel or spray type finish so it can look like a traditional finish down here on the outside so it looks like a traditional cement concrete house on the outside and on the inside it can look like plaster smooth or you can have a texture if you want and that'll be the finish on there and then we're also going to be using um cork based products right for the flooring. and yeah. again this is an all natural hypoallergenic materials that are totally sustainable, zero carbon footprint. They absorb sound quality, you know, audible sounds, there's no echo, they don't make dust. They can be installed all the way up interior, exterior. They can go, yep. And the cork oleum you can see here is the main one I think people will like because it comes in a roll and mm -hmm. it, you can there's minimal joints and this also has a 20 year warranty on it and how many years eric 20 year warranty on the 20 floor. year warranty on these floors so these are again it's a material they call it corcolium but why do they call it that so the original it's flooring it will also be so it's called marmoleum which was a natural wood product developed in the late 1800s and so when they make linoleum that's just a chemical mimic of marmoleum, which is an all natural linseed and wood based product. And so the cork oleum is made out of all cork with a natural rubber backing. And this can be used in restaurants or gymnasiums, residential applications, pool, up to pools. So if you have a swimming pool and you want the, you know, the big indoor outdoor appeal, the floor can go right up to the door and to outside. So it can be used outdoors and it's always indoor nice. outdoor it's absorbed sound it's always body temperature whenever you touch oh, it it's amazing so whether it's a cold environment or a hot environment it's always very comfortable and it's i don't say it's soft because it glues right down but if you drop a plate on it it's not going to smash it has it absorbs you know the vibration so things don't break as easily it has a nice quality of sound in the house so cuts way down and never go and, and it's uh didn't you say it's waterproof eric or or no it's waterproof waterproof so and so wine or something and it's not going to absorb like if i spill my wine on it i can clean it up no problem yep you can wipe it right up it's all right <laughs> with animals on it i mean it gets a finish put on it but so even cork has been being used since the late 1800s for flooring as well for which like, for flooring and wall oh. treatments so frank lloyd wright the famous architect all of his bathrooms were done in cork, even the shower stalls. 
I mean, if you go to say like Miami or places like that, all the old houses built in the the twenties, mostly wow. the flooring. So it's it's uh, the cork oleum is again sort of like we were saying here, the next generation of mm -hmm. these materials being more useful and having a great warranty and easy to apply and having all the great health aspects that cork has. So no mold, it's, it's hypoallergenic again. So it's from the bark of a tree. So it has all the properties that the bark has to protect the tree. It has all those same properties. Ergo, waterproof, stops bug infestations, the ants aren't gonna like it, <laughs> things like that. In Very it. important, my friends, because we definitely have uh, the, the the insects in this area, they, you yeah. know, tropical climate so yeah the, and it's the same with the the panels part of the five percent in the foam that's not recycled materials is they put boratic acid which is a natural borax which is a natural occurring element too so mm -hmm. ants and things it's unappealing to them and they there's no like it. so they won't they won't nest in it they won't eat through it they won't come up through the walls like they do on the the cinder block construction. They surely like to do that. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> Everybody who lives in Playa, I will have seen the little ants everywhere. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta spray a lot of vinegar. Yeah, but, and like, there's no wood in here for termites with, you know, so it's, it's a non wooden construction. So there's termites won't find their way to them from around, you know, which is also a consideration down here. I love it. Okay, yeah. amazing. Eric, so tell us again, in the interest of time, why don't you tell me about, um, you already mentioned a little bit about the Blackwater recycling system. Yeah. And you were telling me that this is something that comes from Switzerland. It's a system that was developed there. Yep. yep. And again, you guys bio, are a licensed distributor. Yep, yep. We're the distributor for all of Mexico and Belize for BioRock. BioRock. Okay. Yeah. Let me show you guys neat. what that that's looks neat. like. And they can be the smallest unit is for a single family home, four to six people standard use uh, of like american and canadian water usage and flushing and all that kind of stuff so it's rated for four to six people but it can be scaled up as high as you need to for say you wanted to build a resort or a, you know a, a resort on an island or something so you can scale this all the way up to as many people as you need and that would be engineered by Peter, who runs the company, he's a hydro engineer. So if it had to go up to a certain size, it would all be signed off by an engineer and fully engineered system. Same with the panels and same with the wind turbines and the solar and battery setups. They, as you scale them up, they're all written off by an engineer. Yeah, so the BioRock, and they can be installed above ground or below ground they can be put in a box or something under a deck with sand around them so you don't see them or they can be put in a high water shed as well so they're exactly. super versatile and they have a 25 year warranty on those as well amazing so if people are curious to learn more biorock.com uh, i find it fascinating how scalable these systems can be you can install something as small as a system for four people up until 100 up, up to 120 people they have a standard um, size that goes up to 300, but if you need to go up to, say, a resort where there might be a thousand people, you can scale up to that as well. This is really interesting. You know, uh, sewage is a big uh, issue in this area and handling wastewater, especially yeah. in Tulum. There are many areas that are not yet connected to um, the municipal sewage system. So I'm, I'm really happy to, to see this sort of solution becoming introduced to this marketplace. And I really hope, Eric, that you're gonna just take it and go, you know, I really think, and I I think this is something that people need in this area. Yeah, you know, it's, it's one of the most important things in a house is to be able to take care of your wastewater because I mean, without that, there can be health problems and redoing a septic system. <laughs> As we all know, it can be a real expensive situation if it fails. A stinky situation too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, so these, I mean, that's part of the problem. These have a, the the secondary bio aerator cuts down on almost all the smell, so they're all, they're virtually odorless as well. That's amazing. God bless the engineers that came up with this. Like mm -hmm. we have such smart humans on this earth. Yeah, God bless they're them. all produced in a, a zero carbon footprint factory. 
So they, they take a lot of care. And these units themselves can be, most septic systems have to be filled with water or recharged every six months or so if you're not living there. These can okay. go up to five years without being having to be maintained. So if it's your second home or your vacation place and you're not going to be there for a year or something, this doesn't affect the system. You don't have to have a grounds person come and recharge them with water so the concrete doesn't crack. Or Absolutely amazing. Um, can you give me an idea, Eric, like if somebody wanted to have, I don't know, a two, three bedroom home and they want to have something like this installed, that would be good for, let's say, 10 people. Do you have any idea what the cost would be? Yeah, for 10, for a standard unit, it's about 45, 4,500 American dollars. And that's for four to six people plus the shipping. And so if you want to scale it up from there, it doesn't double. It's, you know, it's more like 20 or 30% because the tank just gets bigger and the bio rater gets bigger. So that is amazing. One for four to six people, 4,500 to 5,000, but it might be like 6,500 for one for 10 people. You know, so it doesn't double in value. It just goes up percentage wise. That is really fascinating. So it's a little bit more than the, like the rotoplast ones people use down here. But even those are like a couple thousand dollars. So if you take the benefits of this and the longevity, and it has, like I said, it's a 25 year warranty on it. 25 year warranty from the company. Yeah, that's a manufacturer's warranty. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yep. And okay, finally, Eric, because I know I know you've spoken to me about this, and again, I, I just find it so fascinating. I don't want to go much longer than half an hour. Yep. So you had also mentioned, and again, when people, first of all, the whole off grid. Maybe we should have explained what that is. You know, <laughs> uh, how would you explain it? Because I know it's such a buzzword. Um, yeah, well, when the way I look at off grid is that you're basically doing all the infrastructure that a municipality would do for you but doing it yourself so you either have a way to get your fresh water which is a well or taking out of a lake or something and filtering it or having rainwater capture which here might not be the best and then you're also taking care of your wastewater and using water efficiently but you also have to produce your own electricity to obviously run the house and run all of the systems like your refrigerator your computer charging your cell phone, doing all those things. So, so speaking of that. Yeah, these are all the things a municipality would normally take care of for you. And you can just hook into the grid, hook into the municipal sewer system. And, you know, you pay for all those as well. And so in this aspect, we are going to be doing vertical axis wind turbines. Um, so they're a different technology than this, my people you normally wanna, think of as a wind not, mill, you know, so they're set up on a vertical axis and there's a double helix basically. And these are all made out of carbon composite material. So they're, that, uh, what was the website for that? The B wind. Oh, I might've not put that in there. Is it B? B dash wind. That. Dot com. Dot com. Check this out, my friends. Uh, I've, you yeah. know, so you until can see Eric that. showed me these, I, I had never seen anything like this. So what's the advantage of these sort of wind turbines, Eric, versus like what people are used to seeing with, with the flat? Uh, well, these are much more efficient. <laughs> First of all, they have a much smaller footprint. And instead of having blades that are perpetually spinning around like this, these just go like a corkscrew. And they have a wind deflector on the outside, so they look like a solid mass instead of winds going like this. Mm -hmm. And they have a much smaller footprint. And you can mount them on a, a rooftop or on a pole like you see here. And they work in conjunction, well, like in tandem with solar panels and uh, other alternative styles of energy production. Tidal, you know, generators from the... You know, if you're mm -hmm. have one for tools or wind turbines, and they can mount with a battery system and solar panels. So they come with a charging unit, like a charge controller that will help run them through and charge your battery system, or they just can go right into your circuit because they produce AC power instantly. So you can have a plug on them, or you can make uh, you can use electric char car charging 
And so you can have an electric vehicle charger attached right to one of them. And so you could have remote electric vehicle charging somewhere, or you can run it back in. If say you want to do multiple houses, you can do a microgrid and then just change that. So the, the, I guess a little complicated, but the, the charging unit changes the three phase power. They produce three phase power and that goes to DC. So they can go to your battery system and charge all your batteries. And then after the battery system, you have a inverter that changes it back to AC and goes into your fuse box. And then that's how you draw the power down. So you can, you know, run it through a whole house system with the batteries and they, unlike solar panels, they run 24 hours a day. That's what's fascinating about this. Now you mentioned to me that some of the units, you can attach solar panels to them. To, yeah. To so on the pole you see here, you can get a chassis that you can mount four or 500 watt solar panels. And you can also put three normal sized batteries right on the turbine itself. Mm -hmm. So that's enough to back up a normal house for a day or something, you know, or half a day if something was going wrong. Or you can do it into a battery pack of like eight or ten or a microgrid battery. Oh, okay, Eric, don't don't go too far into the weeds. <laughs> too much technical information. Yeah. Bottom line, innovative, um, very scalable technology as well. Like you could have from one of these to multiple. Yeah, and then, so the, so the they go from community. one kilowatt, two kilowatts, four or eight kilowatts, depending on the generator and the size of the fins. So the general one people learn is the, the four kilowatt, and that's enough to supplement the majority of power in a house where four people would live with cool. the four solar panels. So that unit you're seeing right there with the four solar panels and the three batteries on it, that's enough to suck it. Maybe not be a hundred percent. You mean some extra batteries, but that would supplement. 70% of your overall energy production in a house. Really cool. In the standards of like Western standards, Canada, yeah, yeah. United States usage, you know. So that keep in mind you're gonna have uh, a more en energy efficient home if you're using this uh the bio rock, the thermal rock yep. panels. So yep. you're probably not gonna be using as much AC as well, that's, that's that's why they work together as such a good system. Yeah. And you can mount these on a pole like you see here, or they can mount on your roof, or they can be and mounted. And by the way, the writing on them can be customized. You could put the name, if you have one of these communities, you could put the name of the community there. Or the and they can be any business. color as well. So you can change the color. And what are they made out of, Eric? They're made out of carbon composite materials. So if they're impervious to salt air, humidity, anything like that. And Isn't that what airplanes are made out of, you said to me? Yep. Yeah, this is what they make the fuselages for like fighter jets and the propellers for military style helicopters and stuff. So it's a carbon composite. So they're very light for what they look like as well. I know, they, you wouldn't think, but they're actually very light. Yeah, and they're easy they're to maintain. Solid. They're very easy to maintain. All the bearings in the generator and all the bearings, because there's a deflector on there, so it'll turn into the wind and maximize the the turbines for spinning and that goes into the generator and all those are self-contained so no salt air no dust things like that can't get in there and you know foul up the works That's so fascinating. they can similar to the panels they take minimal maintenance and can last a very long time you know so guys i'm in love okay this yeah. is absolutely amazing everything you shared eric um and you know until I met you, I didn't know anything about this whole uh, world of, you know, off-grid building, sustainable building. I, uh, I I loved everything you you taught me, you shared with us. Um, I hope others have found this conversation uh, interesting, educational. I guess um, just to wrap up, I wanted to ask you, number one, the, the cost for these, uh, for the wind turbine, you already told me the cost for the septic system. What are we looking at for like a smaller one of those smaller turbines? Well, so for uh, the two kilowatt one with all the systems, and everything, it's about twenty to twenty five thousand American. Okay, okay, yeah. but yeah. I mean that's the price to pay for energy independence, basically. Um, yeah, yeah, and this that that is decentralized, you know, power production, 
and it can be tied into the grid. So even if you are in a house that's attached to the grid, these can work and you can charge your own batteries and there's a kill switch in it. So it won't just keep sending power out if there's a, a failure in the, the grid and that happens instantaneously. So there's, you know, there's more information we don't need to get into now, but, yeah, please, uh, calls, but I can give you my email. Um, yes, please. If people want to, you know, send me an email, the, yeah. questions or anything like that. You can put it in the comments. Just put it as a public comment, not a private chat. Put it as a public comment and I'm going to show it on the screen. Okay. Here's this comments. Yeah. Go ahead, Eric. Hold on, let me see. I don't know if I... Uh, where it says comments on the right side? Yep. This is, I don't know where I... Oh, I see that. There. I don't know where to... Click on that. Click on that. And at the bottom, you can write... Sorry, everyone. This is... Uh, I'm not... Sure yeah. This. This is, I, it's okay. not letting me... No? It's, so it's, it's, yeah, I can just tell you it's Eric. Yeah, what is it? Eric H, E-R-I-C-H at toopscall.com. Uh, I'm going to write it in, actually. Eric I don't know why it's not allowed me. I can send it to you in the... At T-U-X, T-U-X-T-A-L dot com? K-A-L. T-U-X-K-A-L dot com. Yeah, I just sent it to you in the, the one I sent the other links to. I, I don't know. So I'm going to show you here. Eric H at Tuxhall dot com. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And I'm happy so, to answer any questions people have. Exactly. Eric is an expert. And, uh, and of course, I mean, if you, you know, that's my contact info, my friends, info at freedomplayer.com. That's my cell phone. Uh, I will be happy to refer people to Eric as well. If any of you locally uh, or even across Mexico, you come across this video and you, uh, you know, yeah, either you can reach out to Eric directly, uh, tell him that you found out about uh, him and his company through the, this webinar, uh, or you can reach out to me as well, and uh, I'm happy to put you in touch. Okay, mis amigos. Uh, and one last thing I wanted to mention when it comes to the cost of constructing the homes, Eric, I was surprised when he told me, you know, I don't know if you feel comfortable sharing the price point, mm -hmm. but it was quite attractive, you know, uh, cost per square meter using these types of materials. Uh, do you feel comfortable sharing that? Yeah, I mean, we're trying, we don't have the set complete price, but we're going for 20,000 pesos a square meter is kind of what we're shooting for. So that's okay. that's our goal to try and keep it as competitive as possible. So that is about the price point for regular construction in this area, by the way, my friends. Um, it's not going to be luxury construction, but it's going to be like upscale construction. And you saw the kind of materials and you know if you if you do happen to be in play or if you reach out to eric he can actually show you samples of some of the finishings they look amazing and you can have a variety of colors so it's yeah. gonna be uh you know you can have a house like this to the extent that you're considering building a custom home in this area or anywhere in mexico uh or belize you can have a regular house or you can have this house so <laughs> and again there are multiple models he has access to or if you have your own design idea they can work with yep. you okay mis yeah. amigos um let's wrap her up uh eric any final thoughts any final comments no i think i'm good thank you again so much for uh coming on the show and sharing your expertise with us thanks and for having me it was fun my pleasure oh my goodness yeah. so amazing thanks right. everyone for tuning in this was very interesting and uh, i will see you next week okay have a great rest of your week happy easter if for those of you who celebrate okay Bye, Have everyone. Blessings. Bye.